Edgar Allan Poe is a name spoken by literature teachers across the globe, and perhaps even a name spoken beyond this earthly realm. Being one of the most famous poets in history, it's not unlikely his name may have been mentioned by astronauts on space escapades. Captured in writing for his shadowy demeanor, Poe seems to be stuck as a figure of ill morale and grim standards. Plagued by libelous stories told by his rivals after death, the real Edgar Allan Poe is not as widely known as his Mr. Hyde, so to speak. A man who lived at both ends of the spectrum wealth-wise, Poe was widely underprivileged in the sense of family and love. Into adulthood, he would struggle widely with making a living at what he loved most, writing. Perhaps destined to be the ever-known Gothic author, Poe's death could have come from a story of his own penning. More so, his whole life could be deemed one of his novels, with grim realities and dark, bleak undertones from beginning to end. This is the story of American poet Edgar Allan Poe. While there is little doubt you're familiar with the name Edgar Allan Poe, it is essential to establish who Poe was. Viewed widely as the father of the modern-day detective story, the man Poe has left behind a legacy he couldn't have dreamed of. Directly quoted from the website, The Poe Museum, Edgar Allan Poe was one of the most important and influential American writers of the 19th century. Underneath a layer of mystery and horror, Poe was merely a man going through the motions as you and I. Born on January 19, 1809, to a pair of traveling actors, Edgar Poe was the second child and second son to his unique family. Not long after Edgar, their mother would give birth to a girl, though it is unclear if the child belonged to Edgar's father. Around the time his sister was conceived, Edgar's father abandoned the family to start a new life of his own elsewhere. Tragedy would come for the family again when Poe's mother passed away while he was still a toddler. Poe and his siblings would be split up into different families to grow up separately. Poe found himself unofficially adopted by a man named John Allen and his wife. Allen was added to Poe's name at this point, hence the name we all know, Edgar Allan Poe. John Allen was a tobacco merchant and a very wealthy man, and his wife, Frances Valentine Allen, was childless. She began doting on Poe immediately, but John was not so keen. Being a businessman, John Allen was very expectant of Poe to go down a similar path. Poe, however, was much more interested in poetry and writing, having a dream of getting his writing published. The clash in interests caused for many disputes between Allen and Poe for years, leading to tensions in the household well into Poe's adulthood. When Poe was in his teen years, he would meet a young lady named Elmira Royster. She immediately caught Poe's interest and he fell in love with her, establishing himself as a suitor swiftly and successfully. He was still pursuing his writing dreams as he sought her affections, but her family did not support Elmira's relationship with Poe. This caused problems for the young lovebirds. Poe proposed to Elmira shortly before he planned to attend the University of Virginia, promising her they would stay in contact through letters during his absence. Try as he did, though, the letters Poe wrote would never reach Elmira. Her father took the time to intercept the letters, ensuring his daughter never saw the correspondences, and Poe fell out of contact with Elmira. Without a love to focus on, and with several demons he'd been trying years to ignore, Poe took to gambling while attending university. The thrill and potential of winning money were too tempting to Poe, who soon found himself in a couple of thousand dollars worth of debt. However, the true magnitude of his debt did not hit him, as his wealthy guardians were mainly paying for his education and livelihoods. When Allen became aware of Poe's gambling addiction, he decided to stop paying for anything more than Poe's tuition, as a means of handling it. Poe was to pay off his debt some other way. Instead of this working, though, it backfired. Poe gambled away his tuition and was forced to leave the school. In his failure, he returned home and attempted to find companionship once more in Elmira Royster. But this time, she was engaged to another man. She let Poe know she never received any letters he may have sent. Lost with no certain future, Poe elected to join the U.S. Army. He excelled during his time in the military, proving capable in the tasks he was given. The biggest problem, though, was he was not enjoying it. Poe found the military life to be unbearable, but it was under the worst circumstances that he came across a way of getting out. His adopted mother, Frances, died while Poe was away, but Poe could travel home. He would make it back to Virginia the day after Frances's funeral. During his visit, he would manage to rekindle somewhat of a relationship with John Allen. Confiding in his father figure, Poe told Allen of his distaste for the military, and they came to a deal. If Allen bought Poe's way out of the military, Poe would have to attend and work at West Point. Soon, Poe would make the switch over. Much like he had in the army before, Poe excelled in the work he was given at West Point, and may have even enjoyed it. However, when he received a letter from Allen one day, which spoke of completely cutting off contact, everything changed. With no response to a letter Poe sent asking for more context, Poe immediately set to work on getting himself expelled from West Point. It would not be long before he succeeded. With nowhere else to go, Poe would find housing with a relative from his blood family, 
an aunt named Maria Clems. She lived in Baltimore along with her young daughter, Virginia. While living with his aunt, Poe continued writing and would utilize Virginia as a method of delivering letters and poetry. This would last for some time before Poe's interest shifted from people outside the home to the young girl inside it. It was somewhat culturally acceptable back then, but it's not something that will be expanded on. The subject of his poem, Annabelle Lee, Virginia and Poe would get married when Virginia was 13 and Poe himself 27. During the length of their relationship, Poe would continue to publish his own works and work as an editor, but money remained scarce for this family. Edgar would travel with opportunities around the northeastern United States, though it is not clear whether or not his wife and mother-in-law followed. There were steady constants for just over a decade with the family until tragedy struck. Virginia was young at the age of 24 when she died of tuberculosis in 1847. Losing his love sent Edgar into some hard and dark times, but he would return to his childhood town about two years later in 1849. While on this trip, he would reunite with an old flame, Elmira, a widow herself. The rekindling of their relationship was moving fast, with the two engaged and planning to marry upon Poe's return from a trip. Edgar left on his trip sometime toward the end of September in 1849 and would disappear for five days. There's no way of truly knowing what happened during those five days Poe was gone, but with that information lies the answer to what caused the death of America's Gothic poet. The next precise location of Poe would be in Baltimore, outside of a pub on October 3rd, 1849. Located in the gutter of this pub, he was found delirious and wearing clothes that were not his own by a worker for the Baltimore Sun, Joseph W. Walker. Walker wrote quickly to a doctor Poe told him he knew, and soon, Poe was being transported from outside the pub to a nearby hospital. While it is believed that Poe would simply need to sober up, after a while, it became evident that Poe was succumbing to something more severe than merely being drunk. Poe would suffer for days in this delirious state, calling out about someone named Reynolds as he experienced hallucinations. Tragically, Poe would pass away with no loved ones nearby a few days after his discovery on October 7th, 1849. His fiance and his aunt would learn of his demise through the papers. After Poe died, the process of death to burial went quickly, with no one around to call for one, and with Poe being a rather poor man as is, no autopsy was performed. Though even if there had been, there is bound to have been no detailed answer with 1840s medical knowledge. Poe would also be buried two days after his death, being placed into an unmarked grave in Baltimore. After his death, his obituary was written and filled with libelous comments as a literary rival was in charge of writing it. The obituary was written to paint Poe as a drunk nuisance to society, the rival bitter over a negative review Poe had left him once before. When Poe's cause of death was labeled as congestion of the brain, or a polite way of saying the deceased passed from alcohol or drug abuse, it only gave merit to these negative tales. While there's no way to be sure what happened to Poe as of this time, there are certainly more than a handful of theories out there. Edgar Allan Poe has a cult following of his own, and just as many people are trying to give a sure explanation to the death of a beloved author. Due to the libelous obituary, the most common theory as to what killed Poe was his alcoholism. It seems to be the most likely to some, as he was found outside a pub in the gutters and could not handle himself. For many, this may quickly point to alcohol abuse. This theory also grew more robust when the same literary rival who wrote his obituary wrote the first biography for Edgar Allan Poe. The biography he penned also spoke the same libel. Those close to Poe speak of a man who rarely drank, as the alcohol affected Poe differently and more dramatically than other people. If his loved ones are to be believed over his enemies, it is unlikely Poe was drunk, but that doesn't completely rule out the drinking theory. Another theory tossed around commonly is the theory Elmira's brother beat Poe. The Royster family had never been fond of the author, even when the couple were in their youth. It may have been taken as a sign of disrespect for Poe to return and attempt to court their sister again. If this theory is to be believed, it would include the Royster brothers following Poe on this trip. If they followed him, they would also have kidnapped him and beaten him before dumping him outside the bar in Baltimore. Perhaps it was meant as a warning more than a death warrant. A third theory brings us back to alcohol being in the equation. Edgar Allan Poe may have been the victim of cooping. While cooping may not have been a familiar term to some, it is a crime that can contribute to voter fraud. A victim is selected and either threatened or enticed into participating in a voter fraud scenario. In these scenarios, the person would be dressed in clothes that were not theirs and sent to vote under a fake identity. This would explain why Poe would be drunk as pubs were polling locations back in the 1840s. Shots would be served to those who voted as a congratulation. If Poe was easy to get drunk and took multiple shots from multiple bars, it could attest to why he was so sloppy in his mannerisms, it would also explain the shabby clothes he was found wearing. The last theory we'll discuss is the brain tumor theory. Again, due to lack of an autopsy, and also lack of medical knowledge of the times, it may never be conclusive. This theory, however, is plausible enough to mention. 
There are stories that come from around three decades after Poe's death when his casket was being exhumed and moved to a more permanent location. The casket Poe was in fell in transport and his body would fall out of the coffin. A group of onlookers were shocked to detail a shrunken brain rattling around in the skull of the deceased poet. While it's unlikely to have been the poet's brain, it could have been a tumor the author was inflicted with. This tumor would explain the hallucinations, the delirium, and also his alcohol intolerance. Even some reports speak of doctors mentioning potential brain lesions to Poe at an earlier stage in life. As of the time of this video, there is absolutely no answer to the demise of Edgar Allan Poe. A once healthy man gone in two weeks seems so unlikely, but also as likely as a story of his own penmanship. Any theories that exist could be the answer, just as likely as it could be a mixture or some or all of the theories. In fact, none of the theories could be true. We may never be sure. What do you think happened to Edgar Allan Poe? Let us know down in the comments below. Be sure to recommend any topics you'd like to see a video on and subscribe for more true crime content.